You know what would be cool? If I can go back in time and give myself advice on how to learn to code. If I knew then what I know now. These are the 15 things I wish I knew when I first started coding. I figured there would be a lot of developers who would benefit from hearing some of these tips. Number one, it's not too late to learn how to code. I know, we all wish we could have started at five years old instead of having a Dr. Seuss book, having a book on code. Why couldn't our parents just read us books on how to think like a programmer? That would have given us a leg up in terms of the competition. But you don't need to start when you're five. Of course, that'll be cool, but you really don't need to. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years old, 15 years old, 20, 30, 40, 50, or even 60. As long as you have the capacity to learn, you can learn how to code. All it really takes is giving yourself enough time in order to practice what you're learning. The benefit that people who are young have is that they don't have many responsibilities, so they could focus as much time as they want on how to learn to code. When you're older, sometimes life can get in the way, but don't let that be an excuse. You can do it. Number two, master your operating system, master your text editor, and your browser developer tools. It doesn't matter if you're working with Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. As long as you know how to work your operating system, you're good to start off. But beyond that, you really have to dive into your text editor, figure out how to use some of the functionality that's built into it to get the job done. Two of my favorite text editors to work with is VS Code and Atom. They both provide a lot of functionality that'll help you as a coder. Now, when it comes to browser developer tools, you really should be working with either Chrome or Firefox. They have some of the best developer tools when it comes to inspecting your elements and viewing page source and debugging your JavaScript. Number three, make connections with other developers, especially when you're first starting off. When you're first learning how to code, you're sometimes gonna run into issues and having somebody who's been there before you can be a huge benefit to your developer experience. So try to make connections with other developers when you can. Number four, keep it simple. I know when you first start off coding, you wanna jump into the sexy projects. You wanna jump into the stuff that everybody seems to be talking about. But the thing is, you have to build a strong foundation when it comes to programming. You have to learn the fundamentals. You have to learn the syntax. You have to learn how to think like a programmer. So take it step by step. Don't jump into the advanced topics too soon. Like they say, you gotta be able to walk before you can run. Number five, don't get stuck in a tutorial loop. I know when you're first starting off, you wanna take every single tutorial you can. You're gonna watch this video, you're gonna read this book, you're gonna look at these code examples, and you're gonna keep on doing that. And that's not a bad thing necessarily. But the thing is, in order for you to make sure you're understanding what you're learning, you have to take that tutorial and try to change it up a little bit. Make something a little bit different. Dissect the code and make sure you fully understand what this function's doing here, what this variable's doing there, and what the arrays are. Number six. Don't try to be a know-it-all, especially in the beginning. You want to take time learning one language and really understanding how the syntax and how the code flow for that particular language works. Then once you have that solid understanding, then move on to the next coding language and do the same thing and repeat the process until you know enough languages to put something together, whether you're going to be a front-end developer, a back-end developer, or a full-stack developer. Also, once you think you have it all figured out, everything's gonna change on you. There's gonna be changes within your programming language. And if you're working with libraries, frameworks, and CMSs, that's gonna change often as well. For me, it was with Bootstrap and WordPress. Once I figured I had Bootstrap figured out, it went from Bootstrap 3 to Bootstrap 4. And the same thing with WordPress. Once I figured that out, it went from a regular classic editor experience to the Gutenberg experience. Now, don't get me wrong, change is good, but what this means is that you're always gonna be learning. Number seven, learn how to read the documentation pages. When you first start off, you're gonna question yourself, do you even know how to speak English? Because what you're gonna read in the documentation pages is gonna seem very cryptic. You're gonna see a lot of pseudocode, so you have to be familiar with how to read that pseudocode for that particular language. Number eight, create code snippets. Don't try to memorize everything. 
Some programming languages will have thousands of functions to work with and objects and classes and methods, things of that nature. So it's good for you to have a couple of code snippets that you're gonna use often and try to integrate that with your text editor. Again, you have to master your text editor. This will significantly speed up your development time. Number nine, learn about refactoring code. When you're first starting off learning how to code, you're gonna write a lot of spaghetti code. And if you don't know what that is, then you're most likely writing it. And that's okay. That's part of the learning process, but you're gonna have to learn how to refactor your code to make it more optimized, make it more efficient and more performant. Refactoring code is a major part of the process. Number 10, searching for bugs in your code. In the beginning, or even when you're an advanced coder, you're gonna find yourself spending hours trying to hunt down a bug within your code. And often it's gonna be something that should have been obvious, like case sensitivity. Now, programming languages are all over the map when it comes to case sensitivity. So you wanna make sure that you fully understand what is and isn't case sensitive. Number 11, and this is one of my favorites, Google and Stack Overflow are gonna be your best friends. They're gonna bail you out more often than sometimes your quote unquote real friends will bail you out. If you're stuck on a problem, Google it. There's probably somebody who's been stuck on that very same problem as well, and maybe they created a video or created a blog post about that. And you could also check out the examples on Stack Overflow to see if there's something that might meet your needs in terms of a code solution. But a quick word of advice, make sure to test your code thoroughly. You don't wanna introduce new bugs into your code, right? Number 12, imposter syndrome. You're gonna deal with this a lot. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced coder. You're gonna sometimes feel like you don't really know what you're doing. While some days you're gonna feel like you could just do it all, there's gonna be days that you have doubt. And the problem is, doubt will slow you down big time. So when it comes to imposter syndrome, get over it. Number 13, you don't need a triple monitor setup in order to code. Yes, it might be helpful, but you really don't need it to get started. In fact, you could do a lot with just a regular laptop and a tablet. Now, the benefit of having multiple monitors is that you can look at your project, look at the code and see your results. But again, to get started, your laptop and your tablet will do just fine. Number 14, side projects are awesome. Especially if you find yourself working on the same type of project every single day or every single week, you're gonna wanna introduce something different. This way you can stretch your knowledge. One of the main differences between a novice programmer and a skilled and highly advanced one is that the advanced one is always learning how to do something different. And that's just developing your programmer's mindset. Number 15, take on some advanced topics. Wait a second, didn't I say you shouldn't do advanced stuff too soon? Yes. In the first few months, you gotta focus on the basics. But after you got the basics down packed, now it's time to learn a little bit more advanced topics that can help you as a developer. Learn about Git for version control. It'll help you out significantly. Learn about design patterns. Learn some very basic algorithms and learn how to use a code style. All this stuff will help you structure your code so that way it's optimized, performs well, and hopefully is secure. One thing you want is to have easily maintainable code. You don't wanna look back at your code and say, what was I thinking? All right, bonus tips. Start your blog, your vlog, or your podcast, and get social early on. Trust me, it's helpful to develop a following early in the process of learning to code. This way, once you're ready to take on clients, you'll already have a following. It's kind of like building your brand before you even have a product. Finally, you have to have a life outside of programming. Otherwise, you're just gonna burn out fast. Plus, you wanna build up your creativity, and sometimes that means getting outdoors. All right, that's what I wish I knew when I first started coding. Now, this is what I need from you. I need you to make a commitment to yourself, not to let anyone or anything stop you from achieving your dream. Okay, if you already subscribed, thank you. I appreciate your support. If you're new to my channel, then check out some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, then consider hitting the subscribe button. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Share your thoughts down below, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coding.